Listen, man, can y'all even believe this? Listen to the title. Before you even get upset, listen to the title. Migrants here have an attitude of entitlement. Huh? Let's check this out. While the left insists we need more illegals to keep the economy running, the fact is we're out of room. Look at Seattle. The city's fresh out of cash and can't afford to house the illegals. Now, when you have that many, the rent is just too damn high. So the city told them they had to go. No more free hotels, amigo. But they didn't like that. So they're staging a sit-in. Where? The schools. Dozens of them set up camp at the Garfield Park tennis courts. Democrat activists joined them in a show of force. No hotel rooms, no tennis. Investigative journalist Jonathan Cho went there to check it out, and the tennis squatter said, no bueno. There's someone here who regularly comes to these events that spreads misinformation. If that person is going to be here recording and spreading misinformation, I'm not sure that we can continue with this press conference at this time. They're asking you to stop. Asking you to stop. Public park, lots of sex. You can go there. You can call the police if you want. Mira, ven acá, ven acá. Can you get a job? Don't touch. Can you get a job? Don't touch. No, no way. I almost threw my hat, bro. I almost clearly threw my hat across the room. No, somebody did not just say, "Can you get a job?" I did not just hear that. Did I hear that with my ears or your ears or whoever's? I didn't hear that. Let me go back. Call the police if you want. Mira. Ven acá. Ven acá. Can you get a job? Don't touch. Can you get a job? Don't touch me. Come in here and show people. Don't touch me, homie. What the hell are you? Which, which, how are you? You call me an immigrant? Are you not an immigrant? No, bro. Why would you say that? Because you're Asian. But a migrant sugar daddy swooped in. A private group volunteered to pay for the illegals' hotel rooms if the taxpayers won't. Only problem is, now there are no open hotel rooms for Americans. So, since money doesn't grow on trees, the free hotel stay ends in 10 days. And once that ends, Seattle may be heading towards a migrant Chaz situation. Tennis, anyone? Investigative journalist and Discovery Institute senior fellow Jeez. Jonathan Cho joins me now. Snazzy blazer, Jonathan. Uh, it looked like they didn't really care how well you were dressed. Uh, they don't want reporters to see migrants squatting on children's tennis courts? Well, Jesse, it's because I'm exposing the truth right now. They don't want to show that they're essentially extorting the city. They're saying, look, if they don't get money, if they don't get resources, if they don't get motels, they're going to stay. They're going to protest. They're going to create, again, you know. They're going to make it uncomfortable is what they're going to do. They're going to make it uncomfortable. They're pretty much staging at a high school to say, we're going to make it uncomfortable for you. We're going to make it uncomfortable for your children. We're going to make it uncomfortable for everybody. What, what do you, how do, how do we get here? And it don't even matter anymore how we got here. We're here. How do we fix this? This needs to be fixed. This is a problem. Chaos. What an attitude of entitlement. And again, I show that through my reporting, through my videos, and the video don't lie, and they don't like that. So it's a shakedown. They're going to stop American children from playing tennis until you pay for the hotel rooms. Yep. Yeah, the key here is disruption, and disruption gets the attention of lawmakers and city officials. And credit to Councilmember Joy Hollingsworth, who represents District 3, the Central District neighborhood, a historically black neighborhood, let me mention. By the way, she's saying right now the city has no money, but again, she mentioned that the state legislature earmarked $30 million for these migrants. So uh, it's though un still unclear, though, when that money's going to come through. All right. Do us a favor. Lend Clay Travis your blazer because that's how to pull <laughs> off a loud blazer. Be safe out there, Jonathan. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger flexing on the invasion of criminal illegal aliens running amok in America. To me, coming to America was the key to my success. It's just a place where foreigners are welcomed. And this is the key thing. If you are willing to contribute yeah. to America, there's a lot of people that want to come to America to take advantage of America. And I am very vividly against that. Those two guys. Let that sink in. 
He said it and articulated it very well. Let that sink in. Because I feel like a lot of people are showing up because they feel like it's going to be a shakedown. I'm going to get be given everything I wanted, handed to me on a silver platter, and I can just shake them down for whatever it is I want. And if they don't give us what we want, we got so much, so many numbers that we can go make it uncomfortable for them. That's the way things are going about right now. And that's why we have the problems we're having, along with other reasons. It's look alike. And as Arnie slams illegals taking advantage, the feds busting a squatter trap house chock full of gun-toting, drug-dealing migrants. Fox cameras capturing the moment when feds nabbed three of them. Seven are now currently behind bars, either waiting deportation proceedings or in local custody with ICE detainers. Mm. But one illegal is still on the run. Jesse, it's kind of interesting to see Arnold arguing against his own preferences, i.e. foreign maids. So this is a meaningful <laughs> stance coming from him. It is, but you have to remember when he was immigrating or when many people immigrated into this country, they weren't given anything. Mm -hmm. Right. You got here and because you weren't given anything, you had to hustle. And a lot of immigrants hustled their tails off and created empires. I mean, this country is built from immigration. And that all changes when the minute you get here, you're bused to a metropolis and you're handed a free hotel room, free debit card, free food, and just showered with welfare. You, you have an immediate inclination to say, well, this is great. Why, why do I have to hustle? Why do I have to get a job? Why do I have to work to get an apartment if everyone's just going to give me free stuff? So now people know that and they're not coming for the American dream. Mm -hmm. They're coming for American welfare. And some of them are good people. Some of them are bad hombres, Jessica. And there's a lot of migrant crime. I know MSNBC denies there's migrant crime. But how many perp walks do you have to see on camera for you to see? Yes, people are committing crimes. You know, it's interesting uh, that like those stories that immigrants have of like, coming into America with nothing and building themselves up to, those stories are all gonna be gone. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's like when, you're, when your parents say that yeah, they used to walk to school uphill both ways. Mm -hmm. it, it, immigrants to this country actually used to. Yeah. And that was really, it was arduous, it was hard, and they did a lot. And now we are in a situation where you can just like walk into somebody's unoccupied home and you can live there, you can trash the joint. Yeah. And then when it gets media attention, all of a sudden that's when ICE will come in and I expect that there will probably be some lawsuits from someone who says these poor people should not be kicked out of this house. But they, there might, and I'd be curious what the judge thinks about this, but there might now be an actual challenge in court about sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's have that debate. Um, the other thing I would just mention is President Biden has really turned in the last couple of weeks since he had that uh, Radio City Music Hall event and I think that Barack Obama got to him and said stop talking about the border it is not helping you you need to turn your attention to the things that are going to help you win this election which is health care because he wants Obamacare to be saved and at the same time for example in Texas the Biden administration said that they were going to go and they were going to cut the razor wire in Texas mm -hmm. they've never sent a soul to do that why because they really don't want to because they know that that would be a terrible visual for them and they know that the razor wire is actually helping them. If they were to go and actually cut the razor wire, then the A block would, we wouldn't have had to do the A block because the mm -hmm. polls would be very different. Yeah, yeah it, it's a good point. Why can't Hochul do something, Judge, about any kind of these squatter loopholes? Why, like everybody who hears about it goes, wait, if they just stay there for 30 days, how did this happen? Well, the first question you asked is, why doesn't Hochul do something? Mm -hmm because she doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. We saw that Ron DeSantis in Florida did something. He Facts. did it, the law's passed, it's signed, it's going into Facts. effect. What we're living in- July, they'll see in it, they'll start seeing the effects in ju July. DeSantis didn't play around. It's a Democrat, this is, the, this is the epitome of a Democrat run state. Everything from the sanctuary city state to the no bail to the no discretion on the part of the judges to DAs not prosecuting crime with no accountability. Look, this whole thing started with eight squatters living in a home that was not theirs uh, since October. And they were living there with guns and drugs and a seven-year-old child in the midst of it all. 
So because they're pointing these guns at people and running around with them, uh, the police catch on, the police make arrests, and six of the eight defendants are released by judges. And I want to mention their names because I think it's about time we understood that when the DA asks for bail and you don't give it to them, uh, we've got in the Bronx a uh, Judge Eugene Bowen, B-O-W-E-N, and in the Bronx Judge Lawrence Bushing, B-U-S-C-H-I-N-G. Couldn't set bail, so they're gone. They're gone. Two of those individuals have already been charged with attempted murder, just like that guy was last week mm. in the uh, Jonathan Diller uh, homicide. He was the driver. He's charged with attempted murder in Yonkers and possession of a weapon, and he's out on bail. I have an idea. All right? The idea is this. If you're an illegal and you get into trouble with the law, you are not entitled to bail. Bail is not afforded to you. Bail is something that should only be afforded to people who have roots in the community, who we know who they are, they have a job, they have family. The whole purpose of bail is to assure the return to court. If you are illegal, you are by definition someone who we can no longer flight expect risk. to return to court. In fact, their agenda is to never respond just the way four of these Venezuelans, they're all Venezuelans, mm -hmm. they came in and already they didn't show up for their processing appointments. Shock. So it's time that we change the law in New York. If you're illegal, you don't get bail. Last word to you, Jessica. Well, on Martha's hour, in the 3 o'clock hour, she had on the um, NYPD chief of patrol who was talking about a lot of these issues, and he used very similar rhetoric to how Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about migrants, which is the correct approach and how majority of people feel, that most of the folks who come here are good, they want a better life, they will pay their taxes, they will do whatever they, do, they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you do need And we to need to hear from more people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, because I know it feels disrespect to them. A person that had to show up here and get it out the mud. A person that had to dig his fingers and feet in the ground and, and go for what he know. He had to grit, he had to grind, he had to struggle to get to where he is. That's got to be a slap in the face to them. So we need to hear from more people like that. To be harsher on those that are doing things like this. And there needs to be real consequences. And he made sure to say they get their day in court. I'm not interested in, you know, throwing someone back over the border the second they're accused of something. I am. But that, I understand that. But you are <laughs> not going to be the chief of patrol. Not uh, yet. Not ever. <laughs> um, but I thought that it was a really important balance that he struck there because that's how people in cities like. New York and Chicago and Baltimore and D.C. and I would say even in a lot of red areas feel where they know a lot of migrants. Uh, Joey Jones always says that he grew up in yeah. a part of Georgia. I think it was like 80 percent were migrants. That, but I don't had... think anybody's ever. This is the issue of the Democrats. Is they're the ones that they conflate the lawful and the unlawful. We don't. Right. I never. Well, I, 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 we, I don't... Bad hombres is specifically bad hombres. It's not all hombres. Of course not. No, but there is a there is a language problem. It's, it's always about the language. No, it's it? not it's always about the language. Look, they're called migrants. I mean, what else do you want us to do? Migrants no, on parole. Well, we're illegal Donald aliens Trump's under the law. All right. We've we changed the language. We must go. The murder of 31-year-old NYPD officer Jonathan Diller, who is a husband and a dad to a young baby, Ryan, by a suspect with a lengthy rap sheet and the arrests of believed to be migrant squatters on drug and gun charges here in New York, some of them with prior arrests, like this suspect with an attempted murder charge under his belt, all highlighting what the mayor calls, quote, the biggest challenge that this city and other cities across the country as well are facing. Repeat criminal offenders who are arrested and then re-released into the population. NYPD Chief of Patrol John Shell says criminals like these back on the streets are putting the NYPD officers in a lot of danger. This is three against eight in a basement apartment. We all know what they look like with multiple firearms. This is how dangerous this is. Confronting two people, quite frankly, that should not have been out in the street. We should not have been there to do this dangerous work. 
This is two days after Detective Diller's murder. The same situation where we should have been there. Chief Shell joins me now. Now, Chief what you're going to end up happening is if it gets to the point to where a lot of these cops are going to say no, and they're going to, I guess for lack of a better term, strike and feel like, no, we're losing too many officers. I didn't sign up for this. I have a family. I didn't want to go home. I mean, I want to go home at the end of the day. Like, what do you mean? This is getting out of control. And when you see police chiefs and everything come together like that, that's when you know it's a problem and something needs to be done. The last thing you want to have is a cop and, and a police strike where they're saying, no, this is this is not what we signed up for. And then, <laughs> and then, <sighs> that'll be bad, bro. Chief, thank you very much for the work that you do in the city. How long? How many Pleasure years on the force? In my 31st year. 34, 34 years. And you oversee, as chief of patrol, you oversee all of the divisions across the city, correct? All the, all the police precincts, about 15,500 police officers, sergeants, and about 3,000 civilians. So I have the largest bureau. Uh, I love what I do, and, and it's a pleasure uh, working for them, quite frankly. Well, on all of us who uh, live and or work here are grateful to you for your service to the city and, and your intense commitment under really difficult circumstances. Put us in the, in the shoes of these officers, as you say, two days after Detective Diller was gunned down. Then they find themselves in this basement. W what's going on in this moment? Two days after the tragic murder of one of our own, they're mourning also, but they're also still in the street doing their job. And they, they go to this house in the Bronx, someone calls 911 for a person with a gun. It's one sergeant and two cops. As soon as they get there, they see the person in the alley with the gun. And you see it's an hour alley. They chase him into a basement of a private home, into a back bedroom, and they, and they grab him quickly and we secure the gun. But the second person they engage uh, is in the hallway and he's got a gun under his armpit, and he turns away, and from the body on camera, he reaches for the gun, and the sergeant cops take him down quickly, and it's a nine millimeter with an extended clip, and then we arrest six more people out of that apartment. There's, th there's two more guns, a ghost gun, there's ketamine, there's a child. Very dangerous situation, and you know, the first person with the gun was out on an attempted murder charge from Yonkers, the second person was a walking gun indictment that he shouldn't have been out of jail. We shouldn't be here dealing with this. And yet we do, very dangerous. And at the end of the day, six out of eight walked out of jail on supervised release, which we don't even know what that is really. ROI, and the person with the Yonkers charge, he also walked out. So it's a dangerous situation that we should not have been there, but we do it and they did it well. But same Detective Villa, those two people in that car, two convicted violent felons, two guns, and the driver's walking around with a gun arrest that he's indicted for. We should not have been there. He should not have been there. And he fought for it. Should not have been there. Shouldn't have been there. What the old saying used to be is nothing more scarier than a person with a gun, than a scared person with a gun. Well, we got a new one now. It's nothing scarier than a person with a gun than a person with a gun who's out on bail for gun charges and has no fear of the law. Has no fear of going back to jail. That's a scary person right there. And just to go back to that day quickly, when he was shot, he still fought for that gun and got it out of there and saved lives. It's just, it's just tremendous. He's a hero. Uh, and we remember him. His family should not have been left without him. As you say, there, there are three legs to this stool and the police are one of them and then it goes to the process to the judicial process but it must be so incredibly frustrating when you are doing your role and then you're just watching this conveyor belt these no people many of them um in the, in the country some of them for sure illegally um I, I want you to see this video that our reporter shot of one of these individuals we showed a picture of this man hector de souza Villalta. uh he's the one that you mentioned who was uh, charged with an attempted murder in yonkers just last year watch watch this guy out on the street watch this exchange are you staying i don't know you tell me what happened what happened 
I'm moving out. I was tricked into living here. He looks like he's in a pretty nice car, well dressed. What goes through your mind when you look at this guy? Uh, this gentleman here is not here for the American dream. Most of the migrants that are in New York City are here to work, pursue that dream. Others are not. And what we say as a city is we're a benevolent city. We'll give you everything we have. But if you're here committing violent crimes, you're on guns, no, you should forfeit that right and you, sh you should have your day in court and then you should be moved from our country. You know, you, you watch um, Mayor Adams and he, he says a lot of things that make sense. He wants to remove people who are dangerous, mentally ill on the streets. He wants to get some cooperation in Albany so that these people can stay, the, the judges and uh, the people who are supposed to do the other two legs of the stool will do their job. Explain how you see Mayor Adams um, and, and how he's doing in this job. He's doing a phenomenal job. He is steadfast committed to this police department and his number one priority, he says all the time, you know, public, without public safety, we cannot prosper. You saw the last couple of days how we supported our whole department and what we're doing. He, he's with us. He gives us all the support. He gives me the support to do our jobs. And look, a lot of the things that he's dealing with, he inherited. But like he says, he's not here to describe the problem. Now he's here to fix the problem. And his team, our team, we're doing everything we can to live through this moment and make this city better and safer. All right. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to be back with more. We're going to talk about what has to happen and what the steps are to get there to make people safe. And, you know, we hear, and I want to ask you about this when we come back, because the mayor says that the city is safe, safer than it's been in a long time. So we want to get your reaction to that when we come back with more with Chief of Patrol John Shell, right after this. Immigration law is still tied up in a federal appeals court. Texas's SB4 would allow state law enforcement to arrest and detain illegal migrants. But a Fifth Circuit court is blocking the measure and did so again last week as the Biden administration continues to aim to hold to keep this law on hold. Joining me now is Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. You're on the front line of this border crisis, have been from day one, and have been doing everything to try to protect Texas and the country. Your reaction to this latest uh, blocking of your law? So on this law that I signed, listen, uh, we made the oral arguments in, um, in the Federal Court of Appeals, and uh, candidly, uh, we made arguments that the Biden administration was incapable of, of responding to. And it's this, and that is that uh, there are three laws in the books that Biden is not enforcing. One is to uh, deny illegal entry into the country. Uh, the other is to detain anybody who gets here illegally. And the third is to build border barriers. The Biden administration is doing none of those. Uh, what the Texas law authorizes the state of Texas to do uh, is to do all three of those things. We believe that the federal courts should allow Texas to basically be enforcing federal laws because Biden is not enforcing them. I, I don't understand why the president of the United States is not enforcing the laws of our country. What is the motivation to keep this border wide open? I mean, the fact that they fought you till the end on that razor wire is stunning enough, but he does not want you arresting people who break the law in your own state. Well, it's outrageous. Listen, there's a there's a far left progressive agenda uh, in this country, and he's for one catering to them. But uh, Maria, remember this also, and that is uh, the, the more people that he allows in illegally, uh, those people can be counted toward the census. Uh, the census is used to uh, apportion the number of members of Congress as well as uh, the electors uh, for the presidential election. Uh, and so, even though California may be uh, losing their own citizens to states like Texas, uh, they're gaining residents that will count toward the census by the illegal immigrants allowed in by Joe Biden. So that's that's that is as simple as it is. He just wants an open border because he knows his policies cannot win him another term, cannot win Democrats more time. So he figures, let me get foreigners in to be the voters of Democrats. It's crazy and it's, it's chaotic. And, you know, Americans are facing the consequences uh, through the murders uh, that are committed on people like uh, Lake and Riley and so many others across this entire country. And that's exactly why uh, Joe Biden is so underwater in, in the polling data. Uh, and I think the reason he will lose the election uh, is because he's done such a poor job on illegal immigration. Unless he's got illegals voting for him. Well, in, in this election, uh, he should not have illegals voting for him. However, well, you know, one thing that they uh, try to look at, and, and that is uh, with uh, every mother coming across the border illegally, you know, may, they may give birth uh, to a child who could be able to vote in the years to come.
Right, so it's a longer-term uh, goal here.